Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. The video that you guys are about to see is me pressuring one of my stores that I train. Listen to me, the automotive space is full of amateurs, right? The guys that I train are pros, they're professionals, they're sharp. You're about to see one of my stores that I've only been training for 90 days. And watch how they handle the way I train them. Check it out. Everybody who's listening to me, if you're not on target to hit what you wanted to sell in March, raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Do me a favor. Keep your hand up. Okay. Okay. All right. So listen, so I'm going to ask a question to you guys. Okay. What happened? By the way, like I want to ask you truly like what happened. Okay. I want everybody to do me a favor, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. And by the way, I'm going to talk for two minutes and then Justin will go into objection handling. I'm not going to get us off track, but I want to explain to you a secret rule why people don't get what they want. And by the way, I think you guys will see that I'm right here in just a minute. Okay. So do me a favor. Everybody write this, be where your feet are. Just do me a, be coachable for a couple minutes. You guys are the most coachable group I've ever met. So I know you can change. Be where your feet are. Okay, so let's talk about fulfillment real quick in life. And let's talk about playing for the long game. So my name's Andy Elliott. I've been selling cars since I'm 18. Okay, I've been through the grinder. And what I've learned in my life, my life being fulfilled and me loving my life is the most important thing to me as a person. I have learned that I have a wife. I have kids. I love exercise. Um, I love being good to me. I love work. I'm a, I'm a workaholic. Okay. I love everything. I want to win. I hate losing. Does anybody else hate losing? Raise your hand if you hate losing. I hate it. I hate it. It sucks, but it is a part of life. And every time you lose, there is a lesson to be learned. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. And I'm going to tell you the biggest lesson that I've learned in my life on why I've lost. Two things. Number one, I'm around the wrong people. It's always been I was, it was around the wrong people. Okay? So, like, I believe that all of you right now, I believe this truly, that you're all around the right people. Who believes you're around the right people? Raise your hand. Okay? Now, if you're raising your hand, then you believe you're around the right people. I was at a point in my life at one time where I had my hand down, and I knew I was around the wrong people but I didn't know how to find the right people. Now, if you're around the right people, then there's number two, be where your feet are. I'm going to explain this to you. Okay. Right now on your piece of paper, write down what's important to you. Please, you have to do this. I cannot teach you to hit your goals if you are not clear on what you want in life. Would everybody agree? Yes or no? Okay. <laughs> You don't walk into work and say, oh, I want to sell 15 cars and that's going to make me happy. No, you know what's going to be happy? You fulfilling what you want in life. So do me a favor. Write down what you want. Are you married? If you're married, write down your wife's name or your husband's name. And I'm sure you want them to admire you and you want to be really good to them, right? Like you decided to marry them so you could bring great value to their life. If I'm married, I'm thinking about my daughter She's or my wife. She's somebody's daughter. Like I need to, I want to make her dad happy. And like, man, my daughter's with the right man. This is awesome. Also, I want to take care of her until I die. My kids, I got three kids, guys. I want to be the best freaking dad ever. You know that song, the cats in the cradle, you know the cats in the cradle, the old song where it's like the kid didn't ever, the dad didn't have time for the kid. And then the, the kid, you know, he wants his dad. And then later on in life, the dad wants to be with the kid and the kid don't want to be with the dad anymore. Makes the dad, me cry every time. Makes you cry every time because the dad, by the way, if you're over, if you're 20 years old, you're like, what? You already say cats and what? Listen to me. It's an old song. And basically what it's about is a dad that didn't make time for his child because he said, son, we'll have time soon. Don't worry. I just got to take care of this real quick. We'll do it tomorrow tomorrow never came then one day dad gets older and goes son dad needs a little love dad goes hey dad appreciate you man hey, maybe tomorrow got some things i gotta do it's heartbreaking so do me a favor write down what you want 
right now, be where your feet are. Where are you at right now? You're at work. So you're going to work like you've never worked in your life. That's what you're going to do. Write down, stop being double-minded. This is the biggest problem on why people get beat. Number one, when you're at home, from now on, you're at home. Take your phone and ditch it. Listen to me. I'm going to give you the best advice of your life. Get freaking rid of this, okay? When you're with your kids, you're with your kids. Don't you even let your mind come to work. Keep it out. You know why? Because you're going to learn where your feet are. You're going to start giving all you got when you're in that freaking place. That's all of you right now. And anybody that raised their hand right now and said, oh, Andy, I'm not tracking what I want. I'm going to tell you why. Number one, let's become crystal clear. What do you want in life? Don't give me your to-do list. Give me your priority list. Andy, I want to be a great father. Listen to me. If it was the last 30 seconds of your life, what do you want to be known and be proud of? I want to know to be proud to be a great dad. Okay, cool. So you want to be a great father. What else? Um, I want to be a great husband. Okay, cool. What else? Man, I I wanted to really enjoy the outdoors. Okay, done. Outdoors exercise. What else? I wanted to be really good at my work. I love to work. I wanted to be great at it. Okay. All right. I wanted to be close to God. Okay. Great. Write it down. Okay. Now that we're going to step back, by the way, we're going to go into these objections, but I'm going to show you the core root of why people aren't winning. They're not fulfilled. Listen, I'm going to explain something to everybody right now. How many of you in this room right now, you guys got a family or kids over here? Raise your hand. You got family, kids, people who love you. That's called this hand. Now, everybody over here wants to make a lot of money, be successful, and be financially free. That's this hand, right? Okay. Do you guys want to lose this hand chasing this hand? No. You want to take care of this hand chasing this hand, and then when you get here, you're going to bring them with you because you managed to do it all when the rest of the world couldn't. And then when you do get this, which you will, This training will provide it. If you're doing all this right, when you do get here, you will be fulfilled. You will have no regrets and you'll have everything you want in your life. And you'll watch the rest of the world run around busy and lost. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Okay, slow down. How many things in your life do you, are you maxing out that are important to you? Are you the best dad in the world? Truly look in the mirror, by the way, everybody write down honesty. I want the biggest freaking thing in this world that will set you free, that will make you alive is being honest with yourself, which it is a skill to be honest with yourself. Look in the mirror and say, I am not being as good to my kids as I should be. Okay, we're not going to get down about it. No, 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 no. You don't need to work less. No, you need to be where your feet are. That's it. Dude, you guys were given a mind by God. God gave you a mind for free when you were born. He gave you one. Can I ask you a question? Who owns your mind right now? Who owns it? Who owns it? Does the world own it? Is is they playing with your mind like a toy, throwing you around? Stop it. Take a deep breath and say, hey, (laughs) this is easy. I'm going to be where my feet are right now. When I'm with my kids, no phone. I'm not even going to think about selling. I'm going to think about my kids that have been waiting for me all day long to come home. And I'm going to show them they're important. Okay. My wife, I'm going to give her everything I have when I am with her. My wife always says, don't tell me you love me. Show me you love me. When you look over at me, Andy, and you're on the phone and you're like, love you, babe. She's like, that pisses me off. I don't like that. Put your phone down. Come show me some love, man. Okay? We need to do less talking and do more action when we are doing what we are doing. So this is the new way we run. And if you're if you if you're coachable, which, listen to me, I'm not saying this in a bad way. A lot of people aren't. A lot of people will sit in crap and they'll complain. And they'll do it their whole life instead of just getting out of it. By the way, you don't need to quit working. 
You don't need to quit working as hard. You need to get your mind right. When you're at work, can you guys work like it was the last day you got to work in your life every day you were at work? Yes, you could. And by the way, when you go home, can you turn it off? Yes, you can. And you can give your love to God when you're at church on Sunday or an hour in the morning every day, or you can be with them all day, but don't let your mind run. Okay. I want to tell you guys something, the bit, the most powerful resource and thing you can ever do in your life is to keep control of your mind and not let anyone else have it. Anyways, just sharing that with you. I want to tell you that I've been able to do what most people couldn't do in three lifetimes, three full lifetimes. I've been able to do it in three years. You know why? I am where my feet are. It's that simple. And if I, if that changed my life, I would like to hand that over to you guys. Who in here thinks if we did that, our whole life would change? Raise your hand. Who in here has the courage, the courage, okay, to tell your mind to shut up, get in the back seat. You're in charge now. We are at work now. We are going to work like we're at work. We know tonight if I get off at seven o'clock or if I walk in at nine o'clock or at five o'clock. I physically am going to give everything that I have. Every one of my clients are going to get all of me. And by the way, write this last thing down. We'll go straight into these objections. St save special energy for your family. Okay, what does that mean? When you go home, if your wife and your kids or your husband sees you amped up, fired up, coming home from work, they're like, dude, I love you going to work because you come home and you love what you do. Guys. Be fulfilled. Why do I love going to work? Because when I go home at night, I shower my kids, I shower my wife, I take care of myself in the gym, I'm getting everything in that is on my priority list, and I'm giving it all I got. Now, some people say, you can't do that. You know who they are? They're people that have low self-limiting beliefs. All of you guys can have this. Now, the best advice you've ever gotten your whole life, and the best advice I will ever give you is the one I just gave you. Anybody that can pull off what I just taught, any one of you will have a fulfilled life. You'll have a life of gratitude. Dude, guys, everybody do me a favor. One last thing. Write down adversity. Because some of you right now are going through some adversity. I know you are. When I look at a room like this, and I know we got a couple hundred people or whatever, I know that there's some of you right now that feel like you're just really getting challenged. You're really going through some crap. You know what? Adversity is good for you. It reminds you that you can prove yourself that you are alive. I feel sorry for somebody that's never had any adversity. I don't want an easy life. I love to learn. Every time I do something and I realize that, you know, I have adversity, I'm like, okay, I can't do that again. I got to go here. And that's how we become great. So if you have a challenge right now, stand up to it, man. Put your head up, put your chest out, push your posture in a warrior stance and go freaking take that head on and show your family that you guys are great. So with saying that, we'll go to objections. But when I see people that aren't where they want to go, you know what I know? That the time passed and there was enough time for you to get what you want. That's what I know but something probably distracted you and preoccupied your mind, okay? And by the way, was it worth it? Was it junk? You ever seen somebody in the gym, they're working out and the whole thing they're thinking about is I need to make money and go to work? Dude, what's the value in that? Now when you're at work, you're not even working because you're exhausted from thinking about work when you're at the gym. Come on, man, be where your feet are, guys. So. Did that help anybody? Yes or no? Anybody in here say, hey, man, you know what? That's simple. That's easy. Okay. Matter of fact, it is the easiest, hardest thing you'll ever do in your life. Because this whole world wants to pull you in a thousand different directions. Once you become concrete, crystal clear on what you want, then you viciously attack it. Viciously. Okay. Viciously. All you got. All right. So here we go, guys. Let's go into some objections. Okay, we're going to run around and uh, I'll fly through the rooms. Is that cool? So um, let's go Andrew Wood. Andrew, you look good, man. Can we grab you today? You're looking sharp. You know what I'm saying? Morning. 
All right, Andrew, how, how are we feeling? Are you in your VIP office today? Yeah, I'm on my couch in my living room. <laughs> cool. Hey, you cool with me hitting you with a little objection this morning? Sure, we can try. That's my man. Okay, cool. Hey, so here we go, Andrew. So I'm going to, because I talked to David Long. David, by the way, I reshot a new video on can you tell me what my trade-in's worth over the phone. I reshot it just for you guys, and I removed the independent buyer, and I rewrapped it, and it's phenomenal. It's going to upload. Thanks, brother. It's going to be uploaded in y'all's training center within two days. And by the way, it's really good. And no one else has it but you guys. So it's dangerous. Okay. But Andrew Wood. So I want to hear you handle this one. Hey, Andrew, I really appreciate you giving me all the information on the car that I inquired about. I sent you all over the pics, the VIN, the miles and stuff on my car. Can you tell me what my car is worth over the phone before I come in? Go. Andy, I'm glad you asked. That's an excellent question. Are you familiar with what an independent car buyer is? Yes, but we don't want to use that. We're going to tweak it. We're going to okay. tweak it. It's okay. Listen to me. Uh, so what I want you to do, Andrew, what did you say? Hey, how about we do something real quick? Andrew, let's handle this on the call. What is the fact? What is the fact? When somebody asks me what my car's worth over the phone, how would you normally handle it? Everybody listen up any day of the week. How would you handle it? Uh, you know, that's an excellent question. There's a lot of factors that play into that. Uh, we'd love to see it in person. Would you have a chance to bring it by? Yeah, but I want to get an idea what it's worth over the phone before I come in. Okay, I totally understand. Uh, you know, we have uh, several ways of assessing that. Uh, we have a system that pins down the value of your vehicle based on options, miles. Um, you know, there's a lot of variables, but I could try and work on getting you a range, but we'd certainly love to see it in person. Okay, all right. So do me a favor. Everybody do me a favor real quick. Everybody write down, what's my car worth over the phone? And I just want to do something. And by the way, I have a word track for this. You all have it. Everybody write down, paint a picture. Just do me a favor, please. A word track probably isn't good enough to handle this close. I want everybody to paint a picture. Can I ask a question? I'm going to talk to you, Andrew. Whenever someone goes to, um, whenever your managers have a fresh trade in front of them, do they get an opportunity to put a little more money in that trade in because they don't have to go to the auction? They don't have to pay auction fees, right? They don't have to pay for transport. Am I right? And they get an opportunity to drive it firsthand. Yes or no? Yes. That's what we're going to say. It's going to go like this. Hey, Andrew, thank you so much for asking that question. Number one, I want you to do me a favor and grab a pen and a piece of paper. Can you do that for me? Andrew, can you grab something to write with? Sure. Okay, Andrew, write down number one. Just, just like it sounds, number one. Andrew, we couldn't stay number one in the automotive industry by not trading for enough vehicles. Now, I want to explain to you why we've been able to stay number one. Number one, we have to be highest in all the critical areas that are important in your family, like price, payment, and trade-ins. Andrew, if you came in, I didn't give you enough money for your trade-in, you wouldn't trade your car with me. Am I correct? Correct. So now that we're all on the same page and that's out in the open, I want you to understand that we know that. And it's important that whoever you do business with understands that. Number two, how do we stay number one? By acquiring more vehicles than our competition. Okay, how do we do that? We pay more. It's very simple. What we've learned is common sense, Andrew, that most car dealerships go to the auction to buy their cars. They pay a lot of money for transport fees. They buy cars. They have no idea what they are. Dings, dents, scratches, because you're literally buying stuff on an internet. They pay big auction fees and you're bidding against a thousand people. You know what we want? A further relationship than just today with you. When you come in here, my general manager is personally going to walk out, look at your vehicle, and he is going to give you more money than you could get for it anywhere else in the world for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's sitting in front of him. Number two, he doesn't have to pay transport fees. And number three, he doesn't have to pay auction fees. It's you and him only. And if he makes the number right and you love our car, you'll probably sell it. Would you agree? Yeah. That's how easy this works. So I can set up a time that's convenient between you, me, and him. What time can you make it down? Right now or after work be best? Done. Boom. I can't, yes or no? Yeah, that was good. Am I freaking good? I'm just kidding. That's a joke. That was a joke. That was automotive salesmen. We're having fun. Hey, but Andrew, that's the truth, isn't it? Yeah, that was good stuff. Okay, and by, is that the truth, though? 
Yeah. Yeah. Dude, when Justin or David or any manager here gets an opportunity to, to, to give more, to see a car in person, listen, any manager that's smart knows that if you've got a trade in in front of you, you better wake up because going to the auction and trying to buy that, you're probably going to pay way more for it and you're not going to get an opportunity to get it right now. That's how we keep growing by getting trades faster. So anyways, Andrew, I'm, I, my word track I uploaded is pretty similar to that. If you guys like that, I just recorded for that. There are a lot of companies that have independent buyers. So that's why I've always used it, but you guys don't. So I'm changing y'all's out. Is that cool? Yeah, that, that other one is good. I like some of that stuff. So we can yeah, it's better it. anyways. And it fits you guys, which is what matters. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Good job, Andrew. All right. So let's go to the HFL room. What is that? The Hansel. Hansel so, Ford Lincoln. Hansel Ford Lincoln group. My big, beautiful group of people. All right. Let's unmute you guys over there. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Where are we at? Okay. Who's that good looking sucker in the blue shirt right there on the right side up front? Yeah, right now in the blue shirt, right there behind that water bottle. Who's that guy? Yeah, just Nick Bondock. Nick, my brother from another mother. You ready, Nick? Yes, sir. All right, here we go, Nick. Hey, Nick, I appreciate you getting me all the information on the vehicle. By the way, I sent over my credit application. Okay, I know you got it. Hey, Nick, what's my, what's my payment going to be? Go. And that is a great question. I'm really happy you asked that. Um, um, we have a licensed finance department here at Hansel Ford, and um, they assure that we're always going to get you the best payment you could possibly ask for. Um, so you never have to worry about that with us here. Um, sorry, boss, I'm freezing up here on you. No, you're not. No, you're not. Number one, listen, do me a favor real quick. What's your name again? Nick, Nick, yes, listen, sir. don't ever let anyone else take up space in your head. Remember, I, I started the call and I said, hey, the hardest thing in this world to do is control your mind. And it's your greatest, yes. strongest ass asset, right? Yeah. Nick, Nick, when you don't worry about what anybody else thinks about you, you kill it. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. So let's not worry about what anybody else thinks about you. And that's a decision I need you to make. Okay. So here's the deal. You were doing just fine. I need you to push through and believe in yourself. You ready? We're going to do this again. It's just me and you. You ready? Hey, Nick, what's my payment going to be? You got this. Let's go. I'm so happy you asked that question, Andy. Um, here at Hansel Ford, we're always great with, with the number of departments, especially with uh, your payment. So we have a licensed finance department here that is always here to assure 90% of our customers are going to leave with a better payment than they ever expected um that being the case when's the best time that i can have you come down and uh, we're the best in our payment our best in our quality of vehicle uh, value to you and um customer satisfaction as well okay good job nick nick do me a favor grab that pen grab that piece of paper grab that guy's notebook in front of you i want you yeah go ahead and jack his notebook yep take it all right now, listen, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to write this down and everybody should listen up and listen well. Guys, are you guys public speakers? Do you guys professionally speak for a living? Yes. 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 Yeah. Listen to me. I want to share something with you guys. Are we amateurs or are we pros? If we're amateurs, then how we're going to train is like this. Hey, guys, if you can kind of get it right, we're going to give you credit for it. I'm not your school teacher. I need to be closed. I need to be closed on you being the trusted advisor and the expert in the field that you work in. And by the way, I feel that by three ways, three things. Number one, what you say, write down what you say physically, the words you say. Now that we know the word tracks, my question is, is what we say flowing like water? Number one, what you say. Number two, how you say it. And number three, do you believe in what you're saying? I need you to understand this. If you don't say it nice and smooth, if you don't say it like you love what you do, and if you don't say it like you believe what you're saying is the truth, I ain't buying it. 
I'm going to explain this to you. When someone doesn't buy what you're saying, it's not because it's not the truth. It's because you sound like you're up to something and you sound a little fishy. Now, would you agree there's a lot of people that don't trust automotive salespeople at first? Yes or no? Yes. No big deal. Would you guys like to change the industry and change the game and be the ones that set the standard as the industry leaders for the people that can be trusted? Yes or no? Yeah. All right, yes. Nick. So if we do that, Nick, it's like this. Guy says, what's my payment going to be? Hey, Nick, number one, I'm so glad you asked that. Nick, see my smile? Nick, Nick I, need you to, 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 I need you to mirror me. You ready? Smile. Show me some teeth. All right. Nick, say, I'm so glad you asked that. I'm so glad you asked that. Bam! All of a sudden, you sound better already. Okay? Our licensed finance department. Our licensed finance department. Uses a very strict budgeting system. Uses a very strict budgeting program. That ensures. That ensures. That you don't ever have to worry about your payment being too high. That you don't ever have to worry about your payment being too high. Like it's no big deal, Nick. And then say, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact. Most of my clients. Most of my clients. That had the same concern as you in the past. That had the same concern as you in the past. Actually left. Actually left. With a much lower payment than they were expecting. With a much lower payment than they were expecting. Getting to know you here on the phone. Getting to know you here on the phone. We're phenomenal in that area. We're phenomenal in that area. What time can you make it down? What time can you make it in? That's it, Nick. That's it, Nick. Now, listen, Nick, if you can do that and you can smile like that on the phone. Nick, that was like three or four sentences. Am I right? Yeah. Hey, hey, Nick, it's pretty easy, isn't it? Nick, I want, to tell, I want to tell you how we do it. Number one, we just, we, we, we memorize it, right? We got to memorize it. And then we internalize it. Like, what does this mean to me? Like, do I understand what I'm saying? Yeah, what I'm saying is this client has uncertainty about a payment. So I'm going to create certainty in the deal and take away worry. By the way, nobody's going to sell anything if we start discussing payments on the phone. And they're not going to come in if I don't handle the concern, right? Right. Do we want them to race in here or try to make it in next week? We want them to race in here. So I'm going to give them the answers that make them race in here. And it is the truth. We're not, we're not quoting payments. We're not getting to anything. We're creating a feeling. Nick, write that down. Create a feeling. <clears throat> You're creating a feeling. Man, I need to go do this now. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Good job, Nick. Nick, who's that guy across from me in the uh, in the ponytail? What's his name? Yeah, the big stocky dude. You work out? Mayor? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right, I'm watching you, dude. Don't be trying to get bigger than me. All right, what's your name? <laughs> what's your name? My name's Willie. Willie? Yeah. All right. I remember the Goonies when I was little. One eye Willie. You're probably, <laughs> cool. You're probably too young for that, dude. All right, All right. Willie. Hey, hey, Andy, Andy, before Willie goes, Willie, tell your success story when you closed that customer, I think it was on a Bronco. Fouad told me about it, and you used Andy's word track. Oh, yeah. So basically, they were basically just saying that the, the payment was too high for them. So I showed them how affordable it was, flipped over the paper, uh, showed them exactly, uh, well, the gas mileage wasn't there, so I just showed them the savings in the the actual uh, payments. warranty and everything like that for the payments. And they were out of warranty on their car. So it just made sense. And they were, they were saving, saving some money on the, the next vehicle. So you just did money justification. Yeah. Hey, how good does it feel to have something to say and not get up and run and go get your manager? <laughs> oh, great. It feels amazing. Doesn't it? By the way, I love your managers, but Willie, we need to learn how to do everything on our own and be really good at it. So our managers can do their job and lead. And then, and then we can do our job and defend the pencil and close deals. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, man. What a life. What a life, man. Good job, dude. I'm proud of you. Okay. By the way, you're just going to keep getting better every day until you die. You'll get better. All right, Willie. Good job. Love it. That's amazing. All right. So here we go. So Willie, I'm going to crack you with two in a row. Cause I'm going to test you. Because I want you to be ready. 
Okay, here we go. So, Willie, hey, I come on the lot. I'm looking for a 2018 Ford F-150, and you just tell me it's sold. Okay? And I say, hey, Willie, I was only interested in the vehicle you just sold. Go. Hey, I totally understand, Andy. The, the fact of the matter is when we put these cars on the front line, they sell extremely fast. In fact, the car that you're actually talking about, it actually had a couple of scratches on the rear door panel. If it was still available, I would have told you it's probably not your best pick. But let me ask you this, Andy. If I showed you a newer vehicle with lower miles and at a better price range, would that upset you in any way, in any way at all? Willie, you better quit playing with me. <laughs> <We're> doing <laughs> some training. Willie, listen to me. If you can keep doing what you're doing right now, I swear on my life, go open new, a new bank account. Because if you'll match it with work ethic, there's some things, Willie, that have to be added in here. You have to be the hardest worker in the room. You have to have the best attitude in the room. You literally have to have the mindset of a warrior. So you break records, not break mentally when things get hard. You got to be really good to people. And then if you can really learn like you're doing right now, you're Jesus. It's over. <laughs> You'll be Willie Elliott before too long. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, I've got another one for you. By the way, phenomenal job. i got another one for you. And, and let's test you one more time, okay? Because you might have gotten lucky. So I'm going to let you shoot again <laughs> just to make sure you can make it. All right. Hey, Willie, listen, we drive a 2018 Dodge Ram, 80,000 miles. I go check it out. I love the car. But you say, Andy, would you like to buy it? I say, Willie, I think the miles are too high. I'm going to look for one with a little less miles, but it's a nice truck, but I want 50,000 instead of 80. Go. So it's not hey, like Andy, the miles are too high. Hey, Andy, I totally understand how it may seem that way. However, if you're going to buy a vehicle with fewer miles, you'd have to spend more miles, right? I mean, more money, right? Good. If you drove both vehicles for a three-year period, which one would you owe more money on? The one with fewer miles. With our vehicle having a fewer more miles, uh, the biggest part of the depreciation cycle has already been taken into consideration. So when you look at the bigger picture, you're not, you're most likely not going to be upside down on our vehicle. Whereas with the one with the fewer miles, you're going to be upside down. So going with a highly rated vehicle like ours is definitely the best way to go. If you're trying to save big money now and later. Uh, so come on over. Let's take it for a spin. Let's go, Willie. This, this damn kid. All right, Willie, give me your phone number. I'm, I'm going to send you. Some Don't give it to him, Willie. He's going to try to recruit you. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys what I'm going to do. I'm going to mail Willie some closer swag because Willie's a closer. Let's go. I'm proud of you, Willie. I'm going to send you some stuff. What's your number? 707 uh -huh. 572 uh -huh. 7461. I'm going to tell you, Willie, and I'm just going to give you a compliment here and don't let it go to your head. But the way you speak, the way you talk, I know you've put a lot of time in training. I know you have because you couldn't do what you just did if you didn't do it. OK, the way that you smile when you talk and your eyes, your eyes, you actually seem not scared. And to me, that is a very, very dangerous skill that it takes people a long time to acquire. And the only way to acquire that skill is for you to practice something over and over again so that you feel competent saying it. So you're not nervous anymore. Willie, how much time do you spend practicing? Every day. Um, Never stop. You don't even have to give me a time. When you said every day, that is what every one of us needs to be doing every day until we die. And I want to tell you this. If you'll continue to do what you're doing now, even do more, you'll look up, you'll be the top 1% in the automotive industry. Guaranteed. Especially if you work hard enough and you got a good attitude and you hang around the right people and you don't let bad things intoxicate you and, and you just keep taking care of yourself. But anyways, enough about Willie. Let's get back to me. Let's <laughs> talk about All right. I'm just kidding. Willie, good freaking job. All right, Willie, since we're in your room, Who's the young man across from, um, yeah, the guy that raised his hand. What about him? We'll grab him anyways. What's hey, his name? Angel. What's going Angel? on, Andy? I'm Angel. Angel, come on down here. Angel, but what do you guys only hire models in that room or what? Uh, okay. <laughs> make blush, Andy. The general manager's like, listen to me. If you don't look like you can model, I'm not hiring you, which I, hey, <laughs> I like that. Um, you know, listen, I'm just kidding. All right, so here we go. So we said, what's my, I was only interested in the car you just sold. What's my payment going to be? Can you tell me what my car is worth over the phone? I like the car, but the miles are too high. So now we're going to go, um, we're going to go on the phone. 
the phone is going to be, um, hey, I appreciate you. I'm, I'm calling on a 2018 F-150. I'm like, hey, Angel, tell me about that 2018 F-150. You tell me all about it. I'm like, hey, Angel, where are you located? And you're like, you know, X, Y, and Z location. And I'm like, ah, dang, man, I'm four hours from you. I didn't want to drive that far. I think I'm going to look for one a little bit closer. Go, Angel. Hey, totally understand, Andy. Sounds like your time's extremely valuable. Am I right? Yes. Listen, if you... Excuse me. Listen, if your time's extremely valuable, you got to work with a professional that knows how to value your time. Listen, I sell about 90% of my customers coming from one to five hours away. You know what that means? It means I got to be extremely respectful of their time and be very fast at what I do. Listen, you and I both know you could go to your local dealership about five minutes away, but you're not going to find exactly what you're looking for. So if I can get the vehicle cleaned up, gassed up, ready to rock and roll before you get here, that would make for a better car buying experience, a faster car buying experience, and you get the exact vehicle that you're looking for. So let me ask you this. What time can you make it in? What day? Good job, Angel. Give me your, <laughs> get, Angel, give me your number. Hit him with another one. I am. I'm going to hit him with the number one. But Angel, give me your give me your number. I'm going to You did uh, a good job. Listen, the way you guys are handling these, I don't care that you know the words. What I care is can you can you can you bring the swagger behind the words? That's the key. The key is to keep people comfortable while you're working through difficult situations and knows. And Angel, you did that. And I love that. So I won't, I won't credit people for memorizing it. I'll credit people for member for over memorizing it so they can deliver it, which is what you did. So give me your number. I'm gonna I'm gonna have Jesse text you and get your address. What is it? It's 707 okay. 357-1737. Good job, dude. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. We're going to hit you with another one. All right. So let's go to, Ooh, I'm going to hit you with two back to back. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hit him with a very fast battle games. Da, 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 da. Okay. Are you ready? This is how I would train with you. If you work for me, I couldn't have time to, te to teach. I would just be seeing what you know. So I'm just going to do a skill test match with you, okay? So here we go. All right, so everybody, I'm going to hit him. I'm going to hit him with four objections in a row, okay? And we're going to rate one out of four. Is that cool? We're going to go fast. Okay, here we go. Ready, Angel? Let's do it. Hey, Angel, we're on the pencil, and I say, hey, I appreciate it, Angel, but I got to talk to my wife. Go. Hey, totally understand, Andy. As busy as life is, when it comes to purchasing a vehicle, especially for the family, it's generally a planned event. Now, I know when you left the driveway this morning, you and your wife had a discussion of what the deal needed to look like in order for you guys to comfortably make a decision. You said you loved the vehicle. You said you'd love the safety, the fuel efficiency, and we're well within your budget. So if we could save your wife the hassle of having to come all the way down here, sit through this entire process, take the headache out of the entire transaction, and Andy, make you the hero of the whole process, that upset your wife at all? It's my man. All right. No, thank goodness. Okay, listen to me. All right, good job. Hey, all right. Hey, this is going to be on the lot. We get off a test drive. You ask me to buy the car, and I say, hey, I appreciate it, Angel, but I need to think about it. Go. Hey, of course you need to think about it, Andy. I haven't given you enough information not to think about it. What I'd like to do is give you a quick five-minute proposal of all the facts and figures so that when you go home tonight, you truly have something to think about. Does that sound fair to you, sir? I'm going to have to start being harder on you guys. I can tell <laughs> you guys are pissing me off. All right, <laughs> Here we go. Hey, this one's going to be, Hey, thanks for showing me all the numbers on the card. But before I say yes, hand, I see the Carfax. You bring it back and it has an accident on it. Okay. This is where you're going to paint a picture tell a story. So I'm going to say, Hey, I appreciate it, man, but I don't want to buy a vehicle that's been in an accident. Go. Hey, totally understand. Uh, and if you don't mind me asking what kind of vehicle are you driving right now? Uh, 2022 Dodge Ram. Oh, that's a pretty nice Dodge truck, Ram. man. That, that's a hell of a truck, man. Not as good as a Ford F-150, though. Uh, <laughs> listen, let's just say you're driving through the Starbucks drive through Some knucklehead behind you is not paying attention, driving a couple miles an hour, texting, driving. They smack your rear bumper. Now, would you go ahead and fix that, or would you leave it as is? I'd fix it. You'd fix it, right? And I'm sure you take it to a reputable body shop. Am I right? Sure. <laughs> thing about reputable body shops is that they do report it to Carfax. But even after you get it fixed, you and I can both agree the vehicle's still in perfectly good shape, right? Sure. So in the same way, we can agree your vehicle's a perfectly good vehicle. Our vehicle's a perfectly good vehicle. On top of that, we put it through a 129-point inspection to make sure it's completely safe for you and your family. So I told you, Andy, this is definitely the best vehicle. Sign right here. 
Good job. Boom, buddy. Angel. Good job, buddy. Super three proud. Three. Of you. All right. Don't don't get all don't get all nervous on me on this last one, but this is easy. <laughs> Take it home. Okay. This is going to be, listen, um, I'm on the phone with you and I'm like, Hey, I appreciate you. Thanks for giving me all the information on the 2018 F-150, but I saw it on the internet for 29.9. What's your best price? Or hey, I'm so glad. Deal. Go ahead. Hey, I'm so glad that you asked, Andy. Our store uses what's called market-based pricing. Uh, research shows 90% of our customers don't want to haggle back and forth in order to get the best price. They just want the best price up front. So what we've done is invested in a very expensive but accurate tool that surveys the market to ensure we're priced very aggressively within it. Um, gosh, I'm freezing. No, 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 no. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Uh, a matter of fact, the statistics on this vehicle show that we're priced 85% to market. You know what that means? It means we're priced 15% below what fair market value says we should be asking for this vehicle. So not only are we great at price, Andy, but we're great at other areas important to you and your family, like price, payments, and trade-ins. By the way, are you planning on trading in a vehicle today? Good job, man. I can I can only tell you that I only get an opportunity <clears throat> usually once or twice a month, and it's when I talk to you guys to hear you, okay? Now, by the way, I'm going to ask to hear you actually overcome these. You guys can, are probably some of the only people on the market that can handle these objections. Now, I haven't got to all of you, so I'm sure there's a few of you that can't do what Angel or Willie is doing, but you can do it. You're just not spending the time to do it. Now, I want to ask a question, okay? Angel, how many cars do you have out? It's the 29th. How many cars do you have out for March? Uh, I think 16. Okay. What about you, Willie? How many cars do you got out? A little lower now. Uh, what am I, eight now? Sick, man. You were sick for a week. Oh, yeah, I'm sick for a week. But eight Willie, now, but Willie, you know what your problem is? You don't work hard and you're lazy but you do a lot of studying. Am I correct? Yes or no? Just it was sick. I was on Yeah, yeah. All right. His boss covered him. All right. So you were <laughs> sick. No big deal. Willie, these next three days, I want you to work like it was the last three days you're ever going to get to work in your whole life. Absolutely. Willie, you know what I want you to do? I'm going to make a deal with you. Are you ready? How many cars do you have out? Eight and a half. Can you sell eight cars in three days if you really gave everything you had? Yes or no? I mean, sure, I could. Yes or no? You're the only person yeah. that can decide. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've sold eight cars in a day. So I'm just saying, right, Willie, uh, you're doing a good job. I think you could go sell as many as you thought you could sell. Does that make sense? Okay. You read that old book, As a Man Thinketh? Whatever the hell you think can happen will happen. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. If you think you're going to sell two cars in the next three days, well, then you'll end up at two. If you think you're going to sell eight, you'll find a way to deliver eight. You hear me? I'm going to make yeah. a deal with you, Willie. You sell eight cars in the next three days. I'm going to give you, listen to me, and your manager is going to have to tell me that you sold eight, but I'm going to give you a thousand cash. And I'm going to give you a chance to catch up to your boy next to you and to show everybody in the room that you being sick for two weeks won't hold you down and anybody can come back. Deal? Deal. <clears throat> All right. So in, at the end of uh, the night on Friday, I'm going to expect you to have your manager call me and say, Willie delivered eight cars. Sounds good. And I want everybody to know that everything that they want is possible and you're going to prove it. You want to be the example? Absolutely. Good. I want you to take this seriously. Don't take this lightly. This is a chance for you to make history. Okay. All right. By the way, Good freaking job, Angel. I, I can only tell you that I love it, man. You guys are doing amazing. So let's cover one last thing. We'll get off, get off the phone because next time we get on a call, I'm going to cover three things, okay? I'm going to cover inbound calls. I'm going to cover outbound calls, okay? So basically, I, we're going to cover making a cold call, and then we're going to cover inbound calls. So, so I want to give everybody a heads up on the next call so we're all ready. I feel like a lot of you know these objections. We will continue to, to always test you on them and add more. Okay, once you get better, we're going to add more. But what I want you to know next time, it's going to be like, it's going to be like, Willie, inbound call comes. Ring, ring. And you're going to be like, hope you have the best day of your life. This is Willie, Hansel Automotive Group. How can I help you today? Like you're going to go all the way through to setting an appointment. And that is how we're going to train. 
Then I'm going to say, all right, backside of the call, outbound calls. Manager gives you a list, whether it's a service drive list, whether it's an orphan owner list, whether it's a people that entered a lead list and they didn't, they didn't buy. And you're going to make an outbound call and you're going to go ring, ring. And I'm going to go, hello. And you're going to need to take me to it and get me interested back in a vehicle and in the store. Cool. <clears throat> yeah. You guys like that? Okay. So yeah. I want you to write down this, everybody voice tonality. Okay. This is one of the strongest things that will play out on every phone call. Clearly understanding how to handle a phone call, but voice tonality is everything. Can you guys tell whether somebody cares or whether they don't when they talk to you? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Can you tell if somebody's an amateur and it's their first day? Or can you tell if somebody's been doing it for a while and you can probably be guided by them? Yes or no? Sure. Nobody wants to buy from somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. I just want to tell you, that's why you have to train and get up to speed fast. Okay. Secondly, making outbound calls. If anybody in this room wants to double their sales. Okay. So if Angel has 18 cars out or he's a 20 car hand, if Angel wants to go to selling 40 cars, Angel, you're going to have to be able to make the dials to clients in between selling customers during the day so you can get more people in front of you because this is a numbers game. And the more people you get in front of you, the more people you're going to sell. The better your voice tonality, the more people that'll come in. Also, the better your conversion rate will be on the phone and in person. Am I right? Yes, sir. Welcome to doubling your sales. We don't need more leads. You can generate your own leads. I can literally set 50 appointments today on my own with the manager giving me a list of orphan owners. I, I want leads. I would love to have all the internet leads I can get. I would love to have all the phone pops I could take. I would love to have all the people coming in through the gate that I could get. But what am I going to be doing in between that will determine how successful I am. I'm going to give you a secret. And we're done. Nobody in this room is going to get any more time. None of you. None of you. The time is moving faster and faster as you get older. Some of you are young and you don't understand this. Some of you are older like me and we understand this. I'm going to ask a simple question. If you don't ever turn it up, will there ever be a day that you get to retire Go spend lots of vacations with your family. Be financially free. No longer worry about money. Will those days ever come? No, they won't. I want to tell you that you all, every one of you, have the greatest opportunity in the history of time. Turn it up. Turn it up. And if you don't turn it up, you're going to regret it when you see that time's running out and the best years of your life, when you have the opportunity to turn it up, you didn't. Just so nobody gets caught off guard or gets hit from a sucker punch with time. Wake up now. Wake up now. Why the world is asleep and it's never been easier to be great. I said it. It's never been easier to be great. They're all asleep. OK, let's wake up, giants. Let's wake up. I believe in the story of David and Goliath. OK, David took down a, a giant. I love taking down Goliaths. I love it. I love being the underdog that no one expected to win. And I come out of nowhere. I love it. OK, everyone in this room, all of you are qualified for your best life. So I want you to remember this training that we had today. We'll send you the recording when we're done. If you want to go back and study it and watch it again, do it. For those of you that ever want to become massively wealthy, there's one way to do it. Self-educate. Self-educate every second of the day. If you're not selling something, you're looking for something to sell or you're training to get better. Stay plugged into things that make you great. Guys, last thing we'll say, we're ending this call. Decision making. It is super easy. If you become crystal clear what you want, which is how we started the meeting, 
You attack it viciously. Okay. If something isn't good or take you towards that vision that you want, what do you do? Get rid of it. It can be a person. It can be a thing. It can be you. Some of you inside, the way that you talk to yourself is pretty bad. I would love for you guys to internally start talking to yourself a little bit differently. And if you'll do that, you're going to get a life that no one else has ever had in your family. I promise you. So, hey, I'm grateful every time we get together. You guys are freaking awesome, man. I remember when we first started, it was kind of embarrassing. Y'all remember that day one? It was like, we were like sloppy. You guys are really tightening up. You guys are really growing fast. You guys have grown faster than most companies I train that have been doing it for two or three years. Now, there's an old saying, use it or lose it. If you don't stay sharp, you'll get dull. If you don't knock the dust off you every day, you'll get dusty. Properties either increase in value or go down. Nothing stays the same. Every day, stay plugged in, guys. That's it. Appreciate you guys. You're awesome. Everybody, feel good? Ready to roll? Feel great. Andy, thanks so much. You're awesome. Yeah, you guys are amazing. Great job, guys. Yep, amazing job. Love you guys. See you guys soon. We'll kick butt. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.